All COVID-19 vaccines being developed aim to produce immunity to the SARS-CoV-2 virus by stimulating an immune response to an antigen, usually the characteristic spike protein found on the surface of the virus. Some traditional vaccines achieve this by modifying the virus to weaken or disable it, so that when introduced to the body, an immune response can be generated to the antigen, without the virus causing disease. When the immune system comes into contact with the weakened virus, its defences, such as antibodies and T cells, attack the virus or infected cells. In the process, specialised memory cells take note of the specific antigen and prime the immune system to produce cells and antibodies that will quickly target these proteins. So the next time that person is exposed to the same virus, the immune system is ready to fight it off. Instead of using the whole virus, another way to trigger immunity involves using just fragments of it, like the spike proteins. These subunit vaccines have the advantage of being relatively easy and cheap to produce, and are incapable of causing disease because these fragments are not able to infect host cells. However, they are less likely to be recognised by immune cells aimed at attacking infected cells which means they may trigger a weaker immune response. Because of this, subunit vaccines often include chemical agents called adjuvants, which are designed to stimulate a stronger immune response, and booster shots may also be required. Not all vaccines are designed to introduce antigens to the body. Some work by using cells in a patient's body to produce the antigens themselves. Examples include viral vector vaccines and mRNA vaccines. In both cases, the goal is to get a short fragment of genetic code taken from the target pathogen, in this case the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19, into the patient's cells. By hijacking the cellular mechanisms, these kinds of vaccines mimic the way viruses normally reproduce during natural infection. But rather than creating copies of the virus, the cells only produce large amounts of antigen that then usually trigger a strong immune response. Viral vector vaccines achieve this by inserting the genetic code for the antigen into a harmless virus which effectively acts like a delivery system to get the code into the cells without causing disease. Vector-based vaccines can be complex to develop, but they can trigger strong immune responses without the need for adjuvants. And in theory, one type of vector can be used to deliver code for a range of different antigens, which can speed up vaccine development. Nucleic acid vaccines, like mRNA and DNA vaccines, also involve inserting genetic code into cells to produce antigens. But instead of using viruses to deliver the code, these vaccines take a more direct approach that involves inserting the code directly into cells, either by attaching it to a molecule or by forcing it into cells using a gene gun. These vaccines can be quick and cheap to develop, but they are a relatively new technology. With hundreds of COVID-19 vaccines now in development, it's likely that a mixture of different approaches will be needed in order to stop the global spread of this coronavirus and end the pandemic.